47 yards. Corral down the field. It's the tight end, Yaboa. Off to the races again. Touchdown, Ole Miss. Go Tigers. What's up, everybody? My name is Jeffrey Gardner. Welcome once again to Upset Alert. It is episode number 79 of the Ultimate College Football Podcast, celebrating all 130 teams in FBS. Of course, we are short, rather, just a handful of teams this year uh, for the fall season. We've got 127 uh, that are going to be participating this fall in FBS college football. Um, we are deep at this point in the middle of the college football season. Uh, lots and lots to talk about as we preview this week seven uh, uh, slate. Uh, we've got SEC football to talk, of course. We've got some highlights all across, really some early games even, uh, from, uh, from Wednesday night, from last night as I record here on Friday afternoon. Um, we've really got a lot of football to discuss. Kind of some early recaps of those weeknight games. We had our first Wednesday night game of the year, and it certainly did not disappoint. We had uh, some good action last night as well, uh, Thursday night, uh, for those of you who are listening later. We've got a couple more games coming tonight that I did drop a quick prediction uh, because I didn't know what time today I would actually have a chance to record this episode. But we are here recording a little earlier in the afternoon than expected on twitch.tv slash robot brain eater just to uh, get all our housekeeping out of the way real quick here. Um, we are uh, alive here on twitch.tv slash robot brain eater. That's where we stream the podcast live uh, twice a week, normally every Monday and Thursday around this time, kind of somewhere in the 2 to 4 p.m. range, sometimes a little earlier, sometimes a little bit later than that. Uh, depending on what that kind of week dictates. Um, I think this was a good week, actually, to record the podcast a little later than normal as far as our predictions episode, because there has been a lot in the air. Uh, The SEC particularly has been bitten pretty hard by the COVID-19 bug this week, Uh, so some of those games have already been postponed. LSU, Florida, Vanderbilt, Missouri, both postponed. Uh, We hear about Nick Saban at Alabama, of course, uh, testing positive for COVID-19. So lots of news to kind of jump into before we get into the meat of this episode, which of course, as always, will be our predictions for every single college football game uh, for this coming weekend. So we'll get into all of that. Uh, Just continuing to get into a little bit more of the housekeeping. Uh, For those of you who don't already, please do follow us at Upset Alert Pod on Twitter. We are on there uh, retweeting all the big college football news, sharing all that big college football news, providing my insight uh, to uh, the world of college football, as well as kind of those quick hitting picks like I did last night when I realized this episode was not going to make it uh, onto the air yesterday. Uh, For those of you who are watching on video, of course, I am rocking the red Atlanta Braves jersey. Um, My beloved Atlanta Braves are now up 3-1 to on the Los Angeles Dodgers, but of course, none of you guys are here to hear about that, unless you are, in which case, go Braves. Um, (laughs) Otherwise, we'll keep trucking right along. Did have one last last little bit of housekeeping that I do want to get to real quick here. Um, So we do, for the first time, in the show's history, have actually some uh, some affiliate links uh, to plug here. So I am just going to jump into those real quick. Uh, Buzzsprout, actually, which is the very podcast service that I do really use for this show. Uh, this is not just one of those <laughs> lifeless plugs or anything like that. Uh, following the link, and I'm going to put this in the show notes uh, for the podcast version as well as the YouTube version of the video for those of you who watch that later on. Uh, we're going to have the link in the show notes. Uh, it lets Buzzsprout know uh, that we sent you. gives you a $20 Amazon gift card as well if you sign up for one of those paid plans and help support our show. Um, it's absolutely free to sign up. Uh, Buzzsprout is a podcast hosting service. Um, it's, 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 it's incredibly easy to use is the best way I can describe it. Takes takes all the hard work out of it for you because podcasting really isn't hard 
when you do have the right partners like the team at Buzzsprout. They're passionate about helping you succeed. There's over 100,000 100, podcasters already using Buzzsprout to get their message out. And of course, if you want to upgrade at any time, Buzzsprout has tons of guides to help you find the right equipment at the right price. They help you get your show listed in every major podcast platform. Uh, helped us get onto Apple Podcasts, onto Spotify to help kind of Amazon Music's pilot program for their podcast. Uh, so if you are interested in starting your own podcast, there is no better place to start than Buzzsprout. Again, I'll have our link down in the show notes if you want to help support our show as well as secure an Amazon gift card for yourself and get you started on the right track with your very own podcast. So now that we've got that all kind of out of the way, we're going to keep trucking right along here, and we will get into, like I said, a little bit of the college football news. I'm I'm going to read out just just a, a take or two that I saw regarding this Nick Saban situation, uh, because there does seem to be some disagreement, shall we say, uh, some disparity in the takes on this. Um, Alabama as a football program, and Nick Saban particularly, appears to not be so thrilled with the uh, with the official NCAA regulations on this, that because he, in theory, uh, having a positive COVID nineteen test would not be on the sideline, would not be physically in the stadium, he is not allowed to do any coaching related tasks. Uh, I believe it's within the window of the game, which would be ninety minutes before, ninety minutes after the uh, football game. Uh, so. So that seems to kind of go without saying, right? The whole object here of these regulations is to prevent the spread of COVID-19. Therefore, why would you let anybody who has tested positive into the stadium? It makes sense uh, for obvious reasons, I think, in terms of the integrity of the game. Why you would not want someone not at the stadium performing coaching tasks. Uh, Desmond Howard, though, on Twitter uh, says, I believe Nick Saban will be on the field coaching tomorrow. Enjoy your Friday. Um, kind of a bit of a hot take there. And I actually saw, uh, for those of you who know, obviously rocking the Braves jersey here. I am I am from Georgia. I am a Georgia Bulldog. I graduated from the University of Georgia. So I do have a stake in this game. Take everything I have to say with a grain of salt. But I don't think I'm saying anything too homerish, at least not at this point in the show. Uh, a Georgia beat writer that I follow as well uh, made the comment that he also believes Nick Saban will be on the sideline coaching this game. To a certain extent, you think where there's smoke, there's fire. They must know something I don't know. But let me tell you unequivocally, if if there's a case of a false positive here, perhaps that's the only window that there is. If Nick Saban is indeed positive for COVID-19, there is a zero... Point zero zero percent chance he is allowed inside that stadium tomorrow. I just, I don't see how you could claim to have any kind of real safety regulations and allow someone who is tested positive for COVID-19 knowingly inside of the stadium. So I, I, that should go without saying. But uh, there seems to be this kind of debate online right now. So I am just going to unequivocally make that statement that if he unless there is some kind of false positive and he gets multiple negative tests before the game uh Nick Saban will not be in the stadium on Saturday he will not be coaching but the good news is it appears that no players really nobody else really within the football program that we know of at least has tested positive uh, for Alabama or for Georgia, for that matter, uh, which is just good because because we want to see this football game, right? And obviously, we want everyone to remain healthy. Uh, but but you know, we want to see this. This is the biggest SEC game of the year in the regular season on paper. Um, so we are incredibly excited as college football fans, whether you're a Georgia fan, Alabama fan, or just, you know, whoever, you want to watch this football game if you like good football. Um, so obviously, for selfish reasons, we also want everyone to remain healthy, want this game to be played, and, uh, and, and for everyone to be able to be involved there without becoming a situation where you're spreading it to the Georgia Bulldogs players or to other players on the Alabama football team. Uh, so hopefully everything 
goes off without a hitch uh, as far as that game goes this weekend. Part of the reason that I did not record this episode yesterday uh, was just due to the fact that it wasn't, it didn't seem like 100% lock for most of the morning time yesterday at least that this game was actually going to be played. It was kind of a wait and see type situation. We haven't heard anything otherwise to this point. And at this point, I think the Georgia team is already headed slash already in Tuscaloosa. Um, so it, it seems to be full speed ahead, right? It seems to be full speed ahead. Obviously, other games have been affected this weekend, and we will go ahead without uh, any further ado and get into this week seven schedule. I will kind of recap these games that have already happened. I did drop our quick predictions, like I said, at Upset Alert Pod on Twitter. If you want to follow us on there for kind of those quick picks and uh, just sound bites, college football news, that kind of thing. So let's take a look at this week seven schedule. Wednesday night was the first game of the weekend. Coastal Carolina at number 21, Louisiana. This game was rescheduled. Um, it had been postponed uh, due to some COVID-19 positive tests um, from last week. So moves into this Wednesday slot. Coastal Carolina and Louisiana both coming into this game undefeated. I did pick. I, I did not really publicize it before the game actually happened, but I am 100% honest. I have no reason to lie to you guys. I did pick Louisiana in this game. They lost, of course, Coastal Carolina. The Chanticleers give credit where credit's due. This team is undefeated. I don't think anybody saw this coming for the shots to come out uh, 4-0, I believe it is now, and uh, wins over the Raging Cajuns of Louisiana, as well as a blowout win over Arkansas State. Before that, uh, Coastal Carolina has looked really good, to be quite frank. Louisiana has had their moment, of course, the, the week one win over Iowa State, but uh, since then, they have kind of underperformed. They played close games against Georgia Southern, against Georgia State. Um, I really think that this Louisiana team is still good, but they have underperformed at times. And Coastal Carolina came in there and seized the day. 30-27, they come out with the win. And then, of course, last night we did have another Sun Belt matchup. Georgia State at Arkansas State. Arkansas State picks up a close win in that one, but they do pick up the win, 59-52. to uh, just a shootout. That was a really fun football game. Both of these were really fun football games, actually. It's a good uh, it's a good start, I would say, to a good weekend of college football. Now, tonight we've got two more games. I already dropped predictions on these uh, on the Twitter at Upset Alert Pod, but uh, I'll just kind of reiterate those real quick. Number 17, SMU at Tulane, 6 p.m. on ESPN. I do like SMU to cover. I like both of the favorites to cover in this game. So SMU, I think, wins fairly comfortably over Tulane on the road. Number 14, BYU at Houston, 9.30 p.m. on ESPN. I have no idea. And this is famous last words, right? I said this about Louisville and Georgia Tech. I have no idea why BYU is less than a touchdown favorite. At Houston, I think they could win this game by anywhere from two to three touchdowns at least uh, based on the way their offense has performed thus far. I don't think Houston is terrible, but BYU is a legit top 15-20 team, uh, so they should pick up the win on the road. So let's get into Saturday's slate here, and we're starting in that noontime slot, ABC, number one, Clemson at Georgia Tech. Georgia Tech has really been a tale of two teams this year, right? Georgia Tech has looked great in games against Florida State, who, as we all know now, is terrible. And uh, also in uh, in their recent uh, game against Louisville. But at the same time, it's a tale of two teams. They got uh, they got beat pretty bad by UCF. Um, they've, they've been beat pretty bad in a couple of their games. They just don't look particularly great. They lost to Syracuse. Um, let's, let's call a spade a spade. Clemson is, I think, a four-touchdown favorite in this game. I expect the final score to ar- arrive around that number. I don't know if Clemson wins by 28 or more. I think 27 points was the last spread I saw. Uh, Georgia Tech maybe keeps it a little closer than that against them, but Clemson last week really had their coming out party. That was their most complete game they've played thus far. Uh, They looked 
like they were in a different league than Miami, who has looked very good so far against every other team they've played. Um, so, so it's really, uh, you know, it, it's it's really something where we're going to look at Clemson and say they probably win this one impressive fashion here, but uh, I I don't think they necessarily win by like thirty points or more. Pittsburgh at number 13, Miami, noon on the ACC network here. Uh, I like Miami to win this one fairly comfortably. Pitt is a decent team, but I do think Miami has looked like a legit top 15 team to this point in the season. Uh, They probably bounced back from the bad Clemson loss with a win here. Number 15, Auburn at South Carolina. This one noon on ESPN. Um, Auburn has really not been great to this point in the season right neither has South Carolina of course but that's what you expect from them based on just just who they are as a team uh Auburn looked really bad against Arkansas Arkansas got robbed of a win thanks to a garbage call at the end of that game um Auburn looked awful against Georgia their defense looked bad in that game their offense looked even worse um Really, their only good performance so far was against Kentucky. Uh, They are 2-1, and though. Give credit where credit's due. Um, I think Auburn goes on the road and kind of rights the ship a little bit against South Carolina. I don't know if this is a pretty win for the Tigers in this one. But I do like Auburn to win the football game. Kentucky is on the road at number 18, Tennessee, noon on SEC Network. Tennessee coming fresh off a loss to Georgia in which Tennessee looked good in the first half, awful in the second half. Kentucky has been up and down this year. They just had their best win of the season, I guess their only win of the season to this point last year. Uh, They lost a close one to Ole Miss uh, in a shootout. They lost to Auburn, and uh, now they have won, uh, limiting Mississippi State last week to just a safety uh, as far as their point total. Um, I do think Kentucky is still a good football team. I think they showed a little bit of that last week. I think this one maybe is fairly close, but I do think Tennessee is the better team here. They should win this one on paper. Um, now, Tennessee, after last week, they are kind of in the danger zone. I will say I will put Tennessee fans on a, a little bit of notice here um, and say that. Uh, say that the Volunteers had the potential after how bad they played in the second half to kind of come into this game a little sluggish, hanging their heads low, especially in a noon start. Uh, I think Kentucky could take advantage of that if they uh, if if they can execute the right kind of plays. I think Kentucky could come into Knoxville and at least uh, surprise Tennessee early. I think Tennessee ultimately is the more talented team by a significant margin. They should be able to win this football game. Navy at East Carolina. This is noon ESPN 2. Navy, man. (laughs) Navy has been up and down this season as well. Tough team to predict. East Carolina is really bad for the most part. They just got a nice win last week. Uh, It's pretty much the only good thing you can say about ECU right now. I, I think I'm giving a slight edge to Navy. This is probably an ugly game, though, to be quite quite frank. Navy's not great. East Carolina's not great. Give it to the midshipmen. Texas State at South Alabama. This is noon on ESPNU. Uh, Again, two teams that have not looked particularly great for the most part. South Alabama back in week one. Hey, I I had to give them some love because they won over Southern Miss. Southern Miss has not looked great for the most part since then, so I think that win has definitely been downplayed now. Uh, Texas State did the same thing. They played a close one against SMU, and they have not looked good since then. Um, so SMU obviously has. Texas State, uh, I'm saying, has not looked good since then. Uh, the Bobcats maybe maybe have a chance on the road here. I'm giving the slight edge to South Alabama, though, just for the home field advantage. I don't think either of these teams is really anything to call home about. Uh, I think South Alabama maybe pulls out a close win. South Alabama at Temple here, ESPN Plus uh, noon game here. So for those of you who have ESPN Plus, 
Um, I think Temple's the better team. South Florida has looked like one of the worst teams out of the American Athletic Conference. Temple hasn't looked amazing, but uh, they're okay. They're okay, I think, as a football team. I think they pick up the win here. Liberty at Syracuse, noon on ESPN3. This is an interesting one because traditionally, right, when in doubt, I give the benefit of the doubt to the Power 5 program at home versus a group of five challenger. But you have to at least consider giving it to Liberty here because they have been undefeated to this point, uh, quite frankly. Um, They just had an impressive blowout, and I do mean blowout win, over probably the worst team in college football, ULM, last week. Um, Liberty also owns a win over Western Kentucky. Thus far this season, Syracuse has not looked great other than in that win against Georgia Tech. Uh, I hesitate on this one. I really do. I want to say Syracuse, but I think I am going to give the edge to Liberty. Um, I think Liberty, I don't think that's a spicy take as I'm making it sound uh, because Liberty, I believe, is actually favored in this game, but I am going to give it to the Liberty Flames, and that for me uh, would be considered a bit of a surprise, at least a little bit of a surprise. Um, but uh, Liberty, I think Hugh Freeze has got that team in working order right now. They're firing on all cylinders, so I'm going to give it to the Flames. Kansas at West Virginia. This is the noon on Fox game. That tells you all you need to know about the Big 12 slate this weekend, that Kansas is in that big noon uh, quote-unquote game on Fox. Uh, Kansas is going to lose this game. <laughs> Quite frankly, uh, Kansas is terrible. West Virginia is okay. Uh, I'm not, I'm not sold that the West Virginia that we have seen at their peak this year is is what they truly are. Uh, I'm more comfortable saying West Virginia is kind of a middle of the pack Big Twelve team, but Kansas still is far far below that. Kansas is one of the worst teams in FBS this year. Uh, the Mountaineers are rolling. Army at UTSA. This is uh, as Army usually is in that 1:30 p.m. CBS Sports Network slot. It's kind of nice having this slot just because it's something for you to watch normally uh, during the commercial breaks when all the noon games are at the com- are, are uh, at halftime. Um, this is actually a fairly interesting game. Army has had some ugly wins. They just had uh, a one-score win over Citadel. A uh, very low-scoring game as well, by the way, in that one. But a lot of Army games are kind of slower paced due to that offense that they have. They run the ball for a ton of yards. I do like that Army offense. They kind of wear on folks. But what it also does, uh, in contrast, you say that it, it keeps Army closer against better teams, against teams that maybe they should be able to put away. It also keeps it closer than maybe they would like for it to be. Uh, UTSA has been a pretty good football team this year. You have to give credit where credit's due. Their only loss came last week in a one-score game against BYU, who's a top-15 team. Uh, The Roadrunners have been impressive uh, to this point in the season, and I really think they have a chance to stick around with Army, and I'm actually going to go a step further than that. I'm going to say I think the Roadrunners win this football game uh, hosting the Army Black Knights. I think that would be a little bit of an upset, but uh, and I definitely never would have predicted it in the preseason, but I have really liked what I've seen thus far out of this UTSA team, and I think their most impressive performance actually thus far was last week in a losing effort against BYU. I really like this UTSA team, and uh, I think they are going to win this one against Army. We've got Western Kentucky at UAB. This one, no TV listing. 1.30 p.m., though. Uh, Western Kentucky has not been great to this point in the year. You guys, if you've been listening a while, UAB is my pick in Conference USA. I think they are the best team in that conference. I think they have a hard time uh, losing to anyone, really, in that conference based on what we've seen from a lot of the competition. I like UAB to win this game comfortably. Louisville at Notre Dame. Notre Dame now is ranked number four 
How about that? That might be a little high for me, though you guys know I am high on Notre Dame this year. Um, Louisville at number four, Notre Dame. This is a 2.30 game. Again, I like those kind of offset time slots where we can get a uh, get get a game that we can watch while the other games are at halftime. Uh, Notre Dame is going to win this game for me pretty comfortably. Uh, I, I, it's hard to say really how comfortably because Notre Dame did give up a bunch of points to Florida State. That's really been the only red flag for them thus far. Other than that, they've looked pretty consistently good, I think. I like Notre Dame to win this game by at least a couple of scores, I'll say, against Louisville. We've got Duke at NC State. This is the first of our 3.30 games. This is on ESPN3, so streaming only. Uh, I like NC State. I like what I've seen out of this NC State Wolfpack team thus far. They've picked up some decent wins over some pretty respectable opponents. Uh, to this point in the season, uh, Duke has kind of underwhelmed, as as one might expect. Uh, so so uh, NC State, I'm pretty comfortable with that one, uh, saying they'll win that one. UCF at Memphis. This is 3.30 on ABC. This is one of the better games of the week right here, and it's sneaky good because neither team is coming into it undefeated. Neither team is ranked uh, coming into this, which is kind of unusual for this game over the last few years because these are two of the best teams in the AAC. Um, UCF, of course, has lost to Tulsa. Uh, Memphis has lost come uh, before this game as well. Um they're both very good, right? Cincinnati it, it kind of currently has the edge. SMU even has the edge on these teams remaining undefeated to this point. Uh, but this is almost like an elimination game for competing in that AAC Conference Championship game with both of them having already lost a game. The loser here is pretty much out of it uh, at this point, at this early stage in the season. This is a tough, tough game to call for me. Memphis's loss, I think, looked a little better. They looked a little better in that game. They rallied back and made it close uh, than UCF did in their loss to Tulsa. For me, personally, this is a tough game to call. It's really a tough game to call. It's a, it's a coin flip, essentially, for me. Uh, maybe this is my uh, the fact that I live in Central Florida coming out as a little bit of a bias, but I'm going to give a slight talent edge in this game to UCF. Uh, I do think that both of these teams are capable of rallying to a to an AAC conference championship game and even winning that game potentially. I think right now Cincinnati looks like the team to beat SMU's offense obviously is very explosive. Uh, they're finally back to firing on all cylinders it looks like. But I'm going to take a slight Slight edge for UCF in this game over Memphis on the road. We've got Ole Miss at Arkansas. This is 3.30 p.m. SEC Network. I guess Ole Miss is having some COVID-19 issues as well. Uh, this is kind of coming out just over the last 24 hours or so. Um, I, I don't really truthfully know enough about that situation to know if it's something that's going to potentially cause a last-minute postponement or anything like that of this game uh, or if any significant players will be missing for Ole Miss. But I love what I've seen out of this Ole Miss offense. I love what I've seen, relatively speaking, out of Arkansas as a whole this year. Sam Pittman has had that team way better looking than I ever could have imagined them looking in his first year ever as a head coach. Arkansas will bring the fight in this game. They have showed they have just about as much heart as anyone in all of college football. Ole Miss, though, I like that offense too much. I think Lane Kiffin's offense rolls in this one. Then the Rebels come out on top. Hotty toddy. Gosh almighty. Eastern Kentucky at Troy, 3.30 ESPN 3. I like Troy in this game. I'm not going to waste your time on that. Eastern Kentucky's an FCS opponent, Troy has looked like a middle to upper middle tier Sunbelt team this year. Uh, I think Troy picks up the win here. Number 11, Texas A&M at Mississippi State, 4 p.m. on ESPN. I'm going to go ahead and scroll here. Um, I do think Texas A&M has a chance to bounce back in this one. Mississippi State against Kentucky last week just looked lost 
out there on the football field. Ever since, really, the the LSU win, this has not looked like the same football team uh, that we saw in Week 1. You've seen K.J. Costello throwing picks left and right out there. I, I, I think it's got to be the Aggies in this game. You talk about two teams coming into it on completely opposite momentum swings. Ex, uh, Texas A&M just beat a top five team in Florida, who's probably a legit top five or at least top ten team, uh, despite their defensive problems. And uh, you're talking about Mississippi State, who who just had an ugly, ugly game against Kentucky on the road. I've I've got to take the Aggies in this game. Uh, I am slowly coming around on them a little bit more since that Florida win, but you guys know in the preseason I picked them to go 5-5 five and five for this year. I'm not really backing off of that because they've still got a lot of their toughest games to be played. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I've got to give it to the Aggies here. Mississippi State just looks awful right now. We've got UMass at Georgia Southern, 4 p.m. ESPN2. Georgia Southern has been... Two completely different teams at times this year as well. It's been a lot of up and down for a lot of programs this year. Georgia Southern looked great against Louisiana, nearly upset the Raging Cajuns, uh, who have struggled in a few of their games, as we know, and have now lost finally uh, to Coastal Carolina. Um, But Georgia Southern also nearly lost to Louisiana Monroe. They nearly lost to FCS Campbell. Um, So Georgia Southern has not looked great at times this year, but uh, they're hosting UMass, one of the worst programs in FBS. The last time they played one of the worst programs in FBS was against Louisiana Monroe. That was a very close game. UMass, at last time I checked, is a 31-point underdog in this football game. Based on the way Georgia Southern has played this year, and uh, my buddy Gabe, (laughs) Georgia Southern alum, cover your ears, Based on the way Georgia Southern has played this year, I don't know if I would make a high school team a 31-point underdog to them. I, I, I definitely wouldn't make any FBS team a 31-point underdog to Georgia Southern. That seems like one of the most obvious discrepancies to me looking at the money lines all weekend. I just I, I cannot imagine Georgia Southern winning this game by four touchdowns or more. Uh, that, that seems ridiculous to me. Uh, I do think Georgia Southern's going to win the football game. This is UMass's first game of the season. Uh, of course, they had elected not to play, then opted back in recently. So this is their first game of kind of a weird season for them. I, I don't think UMass is any good at all. I do think Georgia Southern is going to comfortably win this football game, but not not 31, maybe maybe a 14, maybe 20 at the most. But give me the Eagles. Uh, Virginia at Wake Forest. This is 4 p.m. on the ACC network. Um, listen, I, I, I don't even know what direction to go on this game. This is almost a coin flip uh, for me here. But uh, I'm going to give a slight edge to Virginia in this football game. I think they're probably overall the better football team. This one's fairly close to me, uh, maybe within a touchdown, but I do like Virginia to win. North Texas at Middle Tennessee, 5 p.m., CBS Sports Network. I am going to give the edge here, I think, I think, to probably... North Texas, Middle Tennessee has had their moments, but for the most part have not looked very good this season. Uh, They've had some ugly games. They've had some slightly more impressive games, but I am going to give that edge to North Texas, the mean green in this one. We've got another game right after that. It seems kind of weird. I guess there's an alternate uh, CBS Sports Network station because right an hour later, 6 p.m., also on the CBS Sports Network, we've got Marshall at Louisiana Tech. Uh, Louisiana Tech had their moment. They beat Southern Miss in uh, a game where Southern Miss actually looked like they were playing pretty well. Um, They also, of course, got blown out by BYU. Marshall has looked pretty good for the most part this season. I like Marshall in this football game uh, by a fairly comfortable margin. I think at least one to two touchdowns. Marshall wins this game, thundering herd. 
Uh, 7.30 p.m. on ABC. I'm sure that when they were looking at this in the preseason, this looked like it would be a good game. We have number five. Yes, number five, North Carolina at Florida State. I have said this every week on this show for the last probably three or four weeks since it's been inflated. North Carolina is ranked way too high. They have played a fairly easy schedule to this point. They have flexed their muscle on offense. They will probably do that again this Saturday because Florida State is not good. Um, but this North Carolina team is way, way overranked. Um, I, I just don't know what more there is to say about that. They are not a top five team. They are not a top 10 team. They might not even be a top 15 team. To me, uh, they are a top 25 team. They're good. I'll give them that. But uh, they are way overrated. Florida State uh, put up a good performance, their best-looking performance this year against Notre Dame uh, earlier on in uh, in uh, last week. And while there's maybe a slight potential for them to do that again this week, I do like North Carolina to win this one fairly comfortably. Um, and then, of course, we move along. We'll, we'll kind of skip over this next one because there's only, weirdly enough, only three games in that 7.30, 8 o'clock, even the 7 o'clock time range here because of a lot of the postponed games this week were some of the bigger games that were going to occupy those nighttime slots. Uh, so let's just uh, skip over here real quick. Boston College at number 23, Virginia Tech, 8 o'clock on the ACC Network. Virginia Tech, listen, ju- just lost last weekend, I understand. Uh, they have been pretty good so far, I would say it's safe to say. Um, of course, the loss last week, but uh, hosting Boston College. Boston College is a team who hasn't looked so bad this year either. I actually really like this Boston College team uh, to the extent that uh, that that they are just outside of our top 25. They're down in about that 38 spot for us in our updated rankings for this week. Virginia Tech we have at 33, so I do have them outside of our top 25. Um, I think Virginia Tech wins this football game. I do think they're the better football team, but I would not be shocked by a Boston College road win here based on some of the way uh, the way they have played in some of their games thus far this season. Before we get to the game of the week, let's let's go and just review. This has been one of the more active weeks as far as games being postponed since everyone has joined the party. Uh, at least the SEC has joined the party, we'll say. Uh, the first SEC postponed games that we have seen thus far this season. So LSU at number 10, Florida, postponed. Vanderbilt at Missouri, postponed. Number 7, Oklahoma State at Baylor, postponed. Number 8, Cincinnati at Tulsa postponed. Florida International at Charlotte, and most recently, I believe this was the last domino to fall, Southern Miss at UTEP, postponed as well. Do want to give a quick shout out to the Southern Miss family on Twitter. Sippy Sports Show on Twitter, uh, at Sippy Show, uh, has has uh, has been interacting with us a lot on Twitter this week, uh, shouting us out on their podcast th- or on their video show. Rather, I thank you uh, so much for that. But uh, of course, uh, Southern Miss, unfortunately, and UTEP getting de- uh, delayed, uh, postponed this weekend. Uh, I'm actually disappointed about a lot of these games, including that one. Uh, I was interested to see a UTEP team that I think has overperformed, a Southern Miss team that maybe has underperformed this season. I was going to pick Southern Miss in this game, I'll say. Uh, he was asking me my pick on Twitter. Um, I was really interested to see that LSU-Florida, that Oklahoma State-Baylor, that Cincinnati-Tulsa game this weekend. Um, so disappointing. Uh, a few good games that uh, that we will not get to see, at least for now. Uh, I know the LSU-Florida game, I believe, has a new date. They're going to play that in the what was scheduled to be a bye week before the SEC championship game. Uh, so, and so another tough game kind of tacked onto the end of the schedule for the Gators, uh, who may be still in the competition for the SEC championship game. Of course, so we've got the game of the week. 
the game of the week, Georgia, number three Georgia, I should say, at number two Alabama, 8 p.m. on CBS. We have been dancing around this one the entire episode. Nick Saban, positive for COVID-19. If he is legitimate, you know, as I said, unless there's some kind of weird situation with a false positive test and it gets multiple negatives or whatever, Nick Saban will not be there on Saturday. He will not be coaching the Crimson Tide. Steve Sarkeesian stepping in to uh, to fill his shoes, at least for this one game. Uh, and again, I will say, I'm a Georgia Bulldog, right? Take Take everything I say. Please, please, please take everything I say with a grain of salt here. If not now, when? Right? Uh, Alabama fans at least some of the ones I have seen on social media, are already preparing their excuses for this game. Georgia looks better. Now, let me preface this by saying Georgia's offense is not sexy, right? Georgia's offense is not LSU's offense from last year. They are not Alabama's offense from this year. They are not even Georgia's offense from three years ago or two years ago. But this is, uh, this is a Georgia offense that has, at the very least, you can say, has looked better than the Alabama defense has this year, which has statistically been very, very bad. Uh, Alabama's defense has legitimately been one of the bottom ten of the teams who are competing at this point. It's kind of crazy. <laughs> if you think about it. Um, but Alabama has really been terrible on defense to this point in the season. Georgia has been okay, passable on offense, I think is the best way you can describe them. On defense, Georgia is elite. On offense, Alabama is elite. So really looking at it, I think Georgia coming into this game does have a slight edge because I do think their offense actually has potential. And again, this is, is maybe a hot take, but based on the way they're playing so far, I don't think it is. I think this Alabama defense might be the worst defense Georgia has played yet this year. Auburn's defense did not look good against Georgia. But they're not statistically terrible. Arkansas's defense in the second half did not look great against Georgia, but they're not statistically terrible. They kind of bowed their neck a little bit against Auburn at times last week. And, of course, moving along from that, Tennessee's defense, we know from what we've seen from them so far, we don't think it's terrible. Alabama's defense has looked legitimately awful every bit as bad as their offense is good, which is a comment we just said about Florida a couple weeks ago, right before they lost to Texas A&M. I think this Georgia offense might have its best, most complete day thus far this season against the Alabama defense. Now, there's a chance I'm completely wrong. There's a chance that this, this defense does a 180 and they start looking like what we think of as an Alabama defense. But I just don't see it happening. I think Georgia's offense is going to have some success in this game. I think Alabama's certainly will have some success in this game, despite Georgia's defense being so good. But I think Mac Jones throws a pick. I, th I think he's only thrown one thus far this year. I think he throws one, maybe two, in this game. I think Georgia's defense has gotten better at creating turnovers, getting negative plays. And I think Georgia wins the football game. And that's about where I'll leave it. I'll wrap it up for episode number 79. I think it's going to be close. It's going to be a hard-fought game, but I do think Georgia wins that football game on Saturday at Alabama. They won't have seen the last of each other in all likelihood. They'll probably meet together in Atlanta, maybe a third time even in the college football playoff potentially. And you certainly haven't seen the last of us, as we will be right back here on Monday to discuss all the biggest storylines from the weekend. We'll, we'll be here to eat crow, as always. We'll be here for the I Told You So's. And uh, we will be right back here. In the meantime, please do follow us on Twitter at UpsetAlert.
Pod on Twitter. Please do check the show notes uh, on podcast and on YouTube for that affiliate link for Buzzsprout. Sign up, do your own podcast, do your thing. It's absolutely free to start. In the meantime, thank you so much for listening. Hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. And until Monday, we will see you later.